Hi there, Comrade Hughes here with FootageCrate.com for all your footage and crate needs. Today we'll be doing a day to night conversion in DaVinci Resolve 11 Lite or DaVinci Resolve Lite 11, not sure which. Either way, we'll be using two clips today. One is just to show the fundamentals of how to do a day to night conversion. And the second is a little more technical with some auto key framing and also some opacity controls to control uh, the headlights of a car. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope it's useful. Okay, so we've got our timeline, uh, no we don't, we've got our color viewer here and one node already created, which is handy. And we'll call this our balance node. So this is gonna be kind of a little bit of primary correction, um, but correction in this case is gonna be changing the levels, just the lift camera and gain levels using the, um, the wheels just under the, um, the four color wheels there. And there's lots of different ways we could do this, um, but we're just going to kind of add about two or three hours to the to the time this was shot. So this would be about four or five, five or six hours after, kind of dead and night type thing. Um, a bit too far. We're going for about 8 p.m. And let's use Shift and D quickly, quick flash there. Yeah, okay, that's our original shot. That's our second shot, cool. I'm happy with that. But we've got this highlight area here still. Um, so I'm going to create a second corrector using Alt and S, or Option S if you're on a Mac, and just crush that highlight right down. Now, nothing's going to happen here because the highlight range is set to 0 0.667. If we look in the scope, there we go. If I drop it down to 215, that's too much, it covers the face, and that's too far. So 381 brings that highlight down to kind of the level of the rest of the skin there. So we've still got some pretty good skin tone in here, but that's the highlights. Next is our third node. Change the label there, and let's call that color temperature. Color temperature is important because the color temperature of the sky uh, goes from yellow to red to blue, depending on the time of day. So we can add in a bit of, you know, we can change the hue of the image using this offset if we want to do it really quick, but I'll just reset that, there we go, and okay, if we are going for more of a dusk here, we could drag a bit of red into the shadow there, and yeah, but in this case we're not going to, you know, bother with that, so we're going to work in primaries as well, uh, deliberately left that on a log there just so you guys would catch me. And let's pump a bit of red into the lift, into the shadows, and then some blue into the gain. So we get this kind of nice kind of contrast between the red and the blue there. And you see the foliage looks pretty cool, but we've still got a decent color temperature in the face. Let's take the offset out as well. Okay, there we go. Now it looks, compared to that, a lot more like nighttime. So. Okay, that looks about fine to me. So let's just take a look at those nodes again. Um, make sure we know exactly how we got here. Just finish that off. And let's have a look. So we did our balance, our highlights, crush those. And then I'd say clipped, sorry, we clipped those highlights and uh, just adjusted the color temperature of the image while still trying to preserve a bit of skin tone there too. So we turn that balance off. Turn the highlights back on and switch back to normal. That's our original shot. Dark, clipped, colored. Cool. Now let's take a look at our second clip, which is going to involve some car headlights and also some auto king. Just fix this one a little bit. Cool. There we go. So we've got this Porsche. Now I'll just put on the split screen wipe. What I've also done is take a still. Uh, from the first and just applied it to the second clip there. So if I turn on all of these nodes, we can see it looks a bit too blue and a bit too bright. So I'm just going to, hmm, losing a bit of, a bit of detail there in the lift, but it's okay, we can compress that still a little more without losing too much. Um, let's bring the gamma down there. You can see the foliage getting to kind of the 256 level, which is pretty good compared to the other shot you can see on the uh, on the other side of the screen and also the scopes. And just bring down that gain a bit more. So now we've got a still kind of a, a 
kind of punchy looking image, but it's a lot darker now. And that blue is much less noticeable now that we've um, brought everything quite far down. Our highlight seems to still be working as well, as uh, you can see the highlight range is kind of just about, I don't know, 450. Um, the same as it is on the, on the shot of the guy in the car. So, there we go. Okay. In case you're wondering, this shot is from a Taiwanese action film that should be coming out in, hopefully, a few months in cinemas in Taiwan. So, kind of a sneak preview, I guess. Um, cool, let's switch that off, and then let's create our car headlights. And let's rename this label. Normally, I don't really bother too much with the labels, but because it's a tutorial, you should really do everything properly. Headlights is a bit too similar to highlights, so lamps will do. Okay. So just making a power window there, and I can just zoom in. So Alt-F, and then zoom in with the mouse wheel, and click the middle button to drag around the viewer. And I just change the aspect there, save me zooming out and dragging it down again, make it a bit over square. That kind of fits. Now, I'm going to skip a bunch of time here that I did where I kind of fiddled and farted about with the um, the shape and the softness, but I prefer to make it a bit softer and a bit smaller, and that way it doesn't bleed out too much and gives the proper kind of car headlight feel to it. So, three on the softness. And okay, let's pop that to yellow. It's going to look a bit silly now, but then as soon as we turn that gain all the way up, there we go, starting to look more like a car headlight. We could change the colours if we wanted, do kind of an HID type thing, um, but Porsches tend to have the um, kind of yellower lights on them, I think. So that will do. Okay, made another node there, serial. No point messing around with anything else for this. And let's call this lamps right, even though it's actually the left headlight that we're going to do. Um, it's my right, so cool. So I'm just using the transform box there to change that around because it's a lot easier than just moving it about by hand, I feel. Um, okay, let's position that just quickly. And looks pretty good to me. So if we just zoom out again and go maybe full screen, let's have a look. We could actually just um, use the qualifier there to not include that green foliage in it. Uh, as you see there. But I kind of like the way the light bleeds, or seems to bleed through the leaves there like it does. So that will do. And full screen, that looks cool. Zoom out, and cool. It's a car with the headlights on. They could be a bit yellower, it's a bit green or a bit bluey, I'm not quite sure, but that will do for the sake of this. Just bring that left one down a bit. Cool, okay. So, at the start of the shot, there's a car that comes across this Porsche, and if our headlights shine through it, it's going to look rubbish, like this, because it doesn't, it just doesn't look real, especially when the metal part of the car goes past the Porsche. So, using our color mode on the keyframes, and auto key with these diamonds, using the, let's do the right one first, just frame by frame, pretty simple animation, this one. So, I'll make a dynamic keyframe, there we go. One frame just after we want the animation to start. And then going left, let's drop that opacity down in our window area until, well, that's not enough, about, let's say, 76.38. Why the hell not? Cool. So that's going to be opacity zero there because it's the metal frame of the car and light won't pass through it. But when we get to that tinted window, we could maybe just put a little bit of opacity in there. There we go. Looks all right. We can just about see it like we would with a real car if a car was sat with his headlights on stalking somebody. Should really have turned his headlights off, but, you know, not in the script. Okay, so the left, well, my left, uh, the lamp here, is going to start about here. I'm just going to create a keyframe by changing the opacity and resetting it to 100. Let's put it to zero for the metal frame bit. And what was the opacity? Okay, 9.42. So 
Just drag that up, 9.5234, 9.5, not good enough, 9.42, cool. And there we go. So now when we scrub through, we should be able to see, there we go, the headlights come on as if by magic. Now, we've got our before and after here. The before being uh, the chap in the car and the Porsche. There we go, it's switched on, and it's now nighttime. And it's still nighttime in the next shot. It should be roughly the same time. Anyways, that's your lot from me for today, and hopefully I'll be speaking to you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time. All the best.